For six days, the Tour of Utah has tried and tested some of the best riders. Between the heat, the climbing, and the altitude, many have tried, but only a few have survived. So far, Belgian Ben Hermans has proved to be the head of the class. This will be a day he will never forget. Today, Hermans has a chance to make history. Looming in front of him is one last obstacle, and it's a big one. Empire Pass. It's an epic climb on an epic stage, and it's all coming up next. two miles today the final stage of the Larry H Miller tour of Utah stage six Park City to Park City is presented by the Utah Sports Commission Utah the state of sport are they in for a workout today and are we in for a whale of a race before it's all over can Ben Hermans hang on to yellow if he does you'll know he's been in a bike race yeah this is a really tough day they're used to this stage the race finishes here in Park City almost every year the final climb up Empire has pitches at 20% in places. So look out. Anything can happen. The jersey has changed hands on the final day before. Hermans has looked unstoppable, but it's not a done deal yet. We thought yesterday's climbing was uh, epic. Well, today, almost 2,000 feet more. Let's talk about Ben Hermans. This is a guy whose week began with, uh, well, he got to stage two. He just was able to show that he is the premier climber. And it started with the Powder Mountain climb. He just continued to blow people away. Very relentless climb. He came across the line 20 seconds front of James Piccoli. Then stage three in North Salt Lake. You can see him blasting past the remnants of the breakaway there. Kyle Murphy in blue. Lawson Craddock looks over. Nobody could even respond to him. It's like he had another gear and he pulled out another 20 seconds roughly at the finish line there. So very tough man to beat. He has been unstoppable in the most difficult stages. As we look at the GC going into today's stage, there's Hermans in yellow. Piccoli still 46 seconds back, but he thinks he might be able to make a move today. And there's the rest of your top five. After 15 and a half hours of racing, Almeida there, six, Stetna, seventh, Craddock, early yellow jersey of the race, down to eighth, Britain, former winner, in ninth and Badalati in 10th. So Badalati is a man that Hermans will use on the climbs until he is eliminated along with all the other helpers and they're down to just the leaders. Got out of Park City earlier today and this is where they will wind up. Good crowd here. But they're gonna see an awful lot of countryside and they'll climb 7,572 feet before it's over with. Yeah, really tough stage. The climbing really starts in the middle there through Wolf Creek Ranch. A very steep climb, over 15%, and then back to the valley floor, and then it gets real. Empire, a difficult climb, all kinds of different pace or percentages in there, and then a plummeting descent to the finish in Park City. They got started earlier today at the uh, top of Main Street here in Park City, 101 riders. And uh, a man known affectionately to those of us who are tour regulars as Joey Flags made his appearance as he is wont to do here in Park City, the final stage. They started the tour with 113 riders on Monday. We've lost 12 over the a week with injuries and, in and uh, illnesses and 101 now taking off today. And that's the man in yellow. Everybody's sights are on Ben Hermans trying to uh, make sure that he is reeled in today. Breakaway came, it took him a while to get away though, Todd. Over an hour of racing, a few guys got away, then some more joined, and right here, you see another large group going up to the break, and it took a long time for this to happen. There were so many changes at the front of the race, but eventually we ended up with a huge group off the front, 
and we now had almost 28, almost 30 riders in the break. And they're going up Wolf Creek. That climb 2.3 miles. Max grade is 15 percent. Average is nine. And you can see the climbing. They gain 1,100 feet and change. And that's still almost 42 miles away from the finish. This is just the start of the day, the really tough portion of the day. And of course, Empire Pass is the culmination of it. But 23 riders out in that group. And there are some names uh, that we are familiar with. But GC uh, issues there, maybe not quite so much if you're Ben Herman's team. Well, and as you see, lots of teams in here with multiple riders. And on the front, that was Ty Magner for Rally UHC. But here's the group. It is a ginormous group of riders off the front. Four teams in here have three riders. And so they will have all kinds of options. And look for this one to have some legs. They're at two minutes and 50 seconds before the Peloton at this point. That is a huge gap, and we got a lot of horsepower here. So they'll have enough uh, juice there to work, that's for sure. This is an attempted bridge right here. So uh, trying to get to, to a 19 rider group. And we're down to 17 riders in our break. And this is Kevin Vermarka trying to get across. This is a really difficult thing to do. I would say basically impossible. Two minutes and 50 second advantage, but he missed the train when it pulled out of the station and he wants to try and get into it. We look at the peloton there, two minutes and 50 seconds back. Vermarka, by the way, wearing that fan favorite jersey. You saw him just a moment ago. He makes this. He'll uh, put himself in position that he probably sh should have the most aggressive, but the tour will be over for this year. But this is a, uh, a remarkably optimistic move. Yeah, very, very much so. Back to our lead group here as they are getting pretty close to the first King of the Mountain on the day, the Wolf Creek Ranch King of the Mountain. And this climb is uh, actually quite steep, 15% in places. It's, you can see it's going to level out here toward the top. And still Magner on the front. And this is actually worth talking about. Magner is a sprinter on the rally team, but he's leading these guys up this climb, 200 meters to this KOM. It goes to show that early in the race, when you're in a break, they don't throttle it full gas on these climbs because it blows the break up so much. They've already gone down to 17 riders from 28. They've already lost 11. And so really it's about being steady in the break and keeping riders together so you have more guys to pull on the flat sections. See the condition, the road condition, good there too. A relatively new road. This is a private development here, the Wolf Creek Ranch. So they won't have a lot of spectators because the public not allowed in there, but you'll have the folks who either have guests or they, they live there, and that's what the, the main number of uh, folks watching and cheering will be. And they come over the top, and nobody in this group is in the hunt for mountain points, so they really don't care. The uh, mountain classification is being led by Hayden McCormick, and he's got a big enough gap over those guys that they're not concerned. Back here to Vermarka. Great rider, a lot of promise. Working hard to try and make that catch there. He's, uh, again, ambitious would be the understatement. Youngest rider in the race, at not even 19 years old. 18 years, 10 months for the, uh, the baby face rider there, but yeah. he's certainly putting in a man's effort. And look at this. He's, he's just passed 200 meters. He's not that far behind. Encouragement there. We're saying 205. If I if I've got him right at uh, oh there we go. It just got updated Came to down. 135. So that looks more like it. So he has a slim chance, but it's very slim to get across. Winner of the under 23 edition of Liège Baston Liège, which is in the uh, in the pros. It is one of five of the biggest one day races on the calendar. Here's a look at the peloton, and in that peloton, of course, is the man who is wearing yellow, Ben Hermans. He had a chance to visit with Kristen Kenny prior to the start of the stage. Ben, final stage. I know it's all about the yellow, but what is your mindset today? Yeah, there's only one thing to do. That's uh, defend the jersey and just keep an eye on the other GC riders, uh, the second, the third, the fourth place. 
uh, the guys that are less than three minutes behind me, uh, I have to control myself and I just hope for good legs on the final climb and for the rest I need to have confidence in my teammates that they control the race until the bottom of the climb. All right, good luck then. Okay, thank you. Well, that's pretty simple. The philosophy uh, straightforward. I've just got to keep eyes on the people right behind me and make sure I stay ahead of them. Yeah, and he says uh, it's, it is very straightforward. His team has to control the race in general. Anybody within three minutes of him, he has to be able to control them on the final climb. Now, they are not a real veteran team. He is the old man of the team, but they're uh, Peloton going over the top there, the KOM. So that team is still a little bit to be tested to see how they will be able to control that Peloton. Today is, is one of those days that uh, they're going to find out how good they, they really are. Yeah. We'll step aside and take the break in just a moment. The 2019 Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah is brought to you by the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies. More than 80 businesses united by one simple mission of enriching lives. Zions Bank, for banking built to keep up with life. Zions Bank is for you. University of Utah Health, official medical provider of the Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah and you. Snowbird, proud partner and host venue of the Tour of Utah. And by the Utah Office of Tourism. Experience life elevating moments in and between Utah's mighty five national parks and on the greatest snow on earth. Some of the sights here on stage six, the final stage of the Tour of Utah. Today's broadcast in high definition, brought to you by the Utah Sports Commission, proud partner of the Tour of Utah. They continue through Wolf Creek Ranch. Some of the spectacular footage that they uh, and areas of the state they will traverse today. A look at the lead group, which is 22 riders, and they actually be expanding in just a few moments as a, the rider trying to make the bridge. Looks like he might just be able to get there. He's not that far behind. Got to the caravan and weaving his way through there, and has got a visual on that lead group. Well, it looks like the. Officials have actually barraged the caravan a little bit and made them open up some gaps so that it's not as easy for him to get through. And rally car giving him a bottle. And a little conversation there as well. Not sticky at all. Did no. you notice that? No. He's got the official right there in front of him, and the official has opened up the gap. That's uh, yeah he took it quickly and then he's on his way. Wearing that fan favorite jersey. Yeah so really really uh, you see a lot of sportsmanship out there and the rally guys seeing a man coming across alone giving him a bottle actually two bottles. We haven't seen his car in this group yet so maybe he doesn't have one. He doesn't have any teammates in that break, so there's no reason for his car to be there. You would have, you would have thought maybe his car would have followed him across. Yeah, he's riding for the Hoggins Berman Action Team and trying to make that bridge. Let's go inside the tour. We'll go out on the moto with Chad Andrews for the first time today. Chad. Wow. Um, I know I realize this is more color, but this property is simply stunning part of Utah, which brings me to a very important point. Let's talk assets. So assets in the bike race are bike racers. And what I found out is that a lot of the teams that have riders in GC have sent some of their assets up to the front, i.e. Rally, i.e. Israeli, some of the other teams as well. And they've sent their sprinters. If it does kind of survive, then they can sprint. But if they don't, they're there to provide extra support for their riders that are back in general classification. Another thing I want to kind of go over with you guys is that um, Earlier in the race, I felt this a tiny bit neglected, and here's why. Nobody, and I guess if we can blame you two and the guys at Tour Tracker, nobody was giving me anything. I was twisting arms, whatever I could possibly get, live, in person, in down low in a dark alley. Nobody would give me any intel on how they were going to race today. And one final point, a couple of the teams came up to me when the breakaway is established, and they were like, What's going on with Rally? Why are they driving this so hard? So that's kind of interesting to see 
a team drive the brakes so hard? And I honestly don't have an answer for that. Back to you guys. Well, maybe it's just the fact that you bragged how you were a great poker player yesterday, and so they're not about to give you anything at all. Maybe that's the reason. Chad's report brought to us by the LHM group of companies, more than 80 businesses united by one simple mission of enriching lives. And uh, Chad, do we still have you? What's that again? I'm sorry. I uh, just wanted to see if we still had you. So what do you think about yep. that bridge attempt by Kevin Vermarka, who is now uh, just in the middle of the caravan of cars behind the break? So the officials looks like they've opened up a bit of a gap, but he is about to make it back on to some of the cars right behind the break. Pretty impressive. Yeah, so a lot of uh, this climb reminded me so much of powder, but a lot shorter. So a lot of the guys were really struggling and to have one guy come from, did you say he was coming from the Peloton back up here? Exactly. If he's doing that, if Van Marker's doing that, that is an impressive effort because Rally, even like I said, some of the other team cars were going, what is Rally doing? Why are they pushing so hard? And yeah, you guys are going to get a great shot right now of Van Marker coming across. He's right now behind the Worthy car. He's going to make it, which, yeah, that's pretty impressive for a guy to go across that gap with his hard as rally and some of the other teams are pushing. So, yep, Van Marka, he's back at the front. We're going to see how that plays out. All right, thanks, Chad. And we'll step aside as the racing continues. There's Van Marka being able to uh, finally hook up with the back of that lead group. It's time for University of Utah Health Tour Insider. And many athletic uh, pursuits as well as cycling, concussions have become an increasingly important uh, element. But within the Tour of Utah, our medical team has between 15 and 30 seconds to diagnose uh, a down rider as having a concussion so the rider can get back up and ride if he's able to rejoin the group. We have a protocol to answer five simple questions. If the rider can answer those questions, the rider is then allowed to return to the race. The bell, one to go. He's got one lap to go. He thought he won in the He thought he won in the Keep going. He thought he won. He still thinks he won. The crowd trying to let him know. No. Does McCormick have enough? He came so close yesterday. Yeah, I was actually in the locker there. I was just trying to crack him, sort of riding on his hip, just to make him think like, boy, he's really good. Morton on the left, McCormick on the right, oh. and they come under the banner. Oh, really close. Today was just perfect, um, and yeah, again, it's sort of through the last 50 meters. What a finish. Yeah. Morton got it. Morton got it, but boy, not by much. Just far away from redemption. <laughs> <laughs> but it is enough to put both of them in special jerseys today with Herman's the overall leader. Well, Herman's in that yellow still. Best sprinter, Travis McCabe, he's got that wrapped up. Hayden McCormick now in that mountains jersey after his great riding the last couple of days. Almeida in the best young riders jersey. Aggressive is Morton and Kevin Vermarka, fan favorite most promising rookie. He just bridged a two plus minute gap from the field to the break. Talk about promise, that's a heck of a ride. Yeah, I think they said he was out 23 minutes by himself to make that bridge as we look at the profile on the descent now after the Wolf Creek Ranch KOM. Then you see that little valley they're going to go through on the profile and then look out. It's Empire Pass. It really is on at that point. Question is, can anybody threaten the GC with Hermans? Because in the break, we have the, the guy who's closest to him is about eight minutes off. So right now, nothing to worry about for that Israeli Cycling Academy team. They control the front of the peloton. Their man in yellow in great position. Yeah, Hermans sitting there in fourth, just like he told Kristen Kenny earlier today. He doesn't want to have to do anything until the final climb. He wants his team to control the break, keep the break within check at 150. Absolutely no implications at all for the general classification. He can just sit there, concentrate on hydrating, eating, and being ready for the bar fight that's going to ensue up on Empire. And that Israel Cycling Academy, a team that we saw for the first time just a couple of years ago here in the Tour of Utah. And at that time, the goal was basically just to uh, offer an outlet for and, and an expansion of the profile for uh, Israeli cycling. And boy, have they done that and more over the ensuing couple of years. Yeah, the team has really come a long way in a short amount of time. And you see people that have these visions and they use sport 
to try and make change and this team is one of those uh, one of those outlets really and it's been it's been inspiring it's been inspirational and they've ridden very well. Peloton a minute 40 behind the 23 rider lead group. Moving along again this is one of the less testing parts of this uh, stage six the final stage here of the 2019 tour of Utah. A lot of work still to be done though up Empire Pass and then down and into Park City for the finish. Beautiful area private community. They let the race come through but uh, the only spectators are people who live there not the public not allowed in. Kind of a command performance. Nice way to spend a Sunday afternoon. And that Peloton continues to chase this group right here. A minute 40 out front, the 23 riders. Todd, you feel pretty comfortable this thing's going to hang together, don't you, at this point? I, I mean, I, earlier on, the gap was extending. And I thought that the break had a really good chance of producing the winner. Now that it's down below two minutes, if, if they hit the final climb with this much of a gap, I don't Maybe know, not, huh? I don't know that they're going to make it. So the, the field's going to have to loosen the grip a little bit and let this gap get out to I'd like to see for the break to have a chance at least a three minute advantage and and four would be a little more comfortable. Well, it still is a big enough break, however, if they want to work together and and start working together, then they may be able to stay away. But Peloton pretty opened up right now as well. Well, and, and it's a really good illustration to see the two different groups that we've just seen. The front of the breakaway, there are some riders pulling through. There are a lot of riders sitting on. They don't have the consistency that the field has. And that's one of the things about having the leaders team on the front of the field. There's nobody else going to take a pole. Everybody on that team is just going to get up there and ride steady every single pedal stroke until they get to the final climb. In the breakaway, there's a lot of gamesmanship, some people sitting on. And so that's how the brakes fail sometimes. Still a lot of racing ahead here in the final stage of the Tour of Utah. We'll be back with all the action. Let's go! Yeah, I wouldn't miss it. It's going to be so cool. Ah! It's a life changing moment for the rest of my life. This is the champion we've been waiting for. Dwight. Ow! Scott Stanley! Interesting choice of words. It's literally a big deal. My aim is to prove kindness can change the world. Racing continues here in the final stage, stage six, Park City to Park City of the 2019 Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah. Before the day is over, they'll have uh, traversed more than 78 miles. And as far as climbing is concerned, more than 7,500 feet in elevation. So uh, to say that this is a taxing climb would be an understatement, certainly. It is the final stage of the tour. and. For this man, Evan Hoffman, it is his final stage of his professional cycling career. The American riding for Rally UHC, and he visited with our Kristen Kenny before today's stage. Well, Evan, finally here. Your last pro race today. How surreal is that? Uh, it's pretty surreal. It's also a little bit just not sunk in yet. I think it is a big deal. It's my last race, but the same time it's almost just like another race because I've done so many races. What's your mindset coming into tonight? Uh, I think I just want to, my mindset is just to do the best I can. I think that um, there's still a lot to play for with the team so it'd be awesome to just finish on a high note today. Well you certainly have a lot of memories. How do you want to be remembered as a teammate? Uh, I hope that people remember me uh, just as a good teammate, as a selfless rider, and someone who works hard, and um, yeah, as always, uh, trying to help everyone else as much as myself. All right, well, enjoy it out there today. Thank you.
Well, Steve, it really doesn't look like he's it's completely sunk in, does it? And uh, he's, he's relatively young. He's 29 years old. He started his pro career really young. He went over to Europe and raced for the Astana team, which is one of the World Tour teams in 2013 and 2014 as a really young rider and got pretty beat up, came back and uh, then started racing for Smart Stop and then has been with this rally team now for the last uh, several seasons, I guess four years. And he's been an integral part of that. And interesting how humble he was. I mean, in 2017, he won two stages of the Tour of California. He won the Tour of the Gila overall. He helped Rob Britton win this race overall. But he is a proven winner as well as a heck of a great teammate. Well, and that's how he wanted to be remembered. I'm sure he will be as racing continues here. The Peloton giving chase in stage six. It is a title worthy of nature's most diverse and elegant playground. Utah, the state of sport. We continue to build on what is now a superior reputation in the national and worldwide sports industry. Utah is a proven leader in the winter, action, adventure, and motorsports arenas, hosting the best of the best, always pushing the limits of human performance, like the Nitro World Games, Dew Tour, Red Bull Rampage, Xterra, Supercross, Iron Man, and of course, the Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah. Many thought the 2002 Winter Olympic Games would be the pinnacle of sports in Utah. In retrospect, it's quite clear. The Olympics were just the beginning. Racing continues here with the lead group out front. And a couple of minutes is all their margin is right now as they head for Park City. They head for the Empire Pass climb first, however, and that one is going to provide some huge, huge separation. 23 leaders, and uh, they are trying to stay away with just a minute 40 break as we welcome you into the Utah Sports Commission broadcast booth. Steve Brown along with Todd Gogolski and Gogo. Uh, maybe playing out a little bit the way we anticipated, but maybe the gap isn't quite what everybody was thinking it would be. Big group, and it looks like there's some infighting in that group now, so it's starting to split up again. But yeah, Empire, that group will be disintegrated into just remnants of it, what it has been all day. And I think if they have less than two minutes, it's going to be tough for anybody to win from that group, even though they've got some great climbers in there like Dyer Quintana, Sergei Tvetkov, some proven climbers in this race, in that break. They need some time first. Well, and then, of course, that descent coming down, Empire, is the thing that everybody worries about. There's some technical corners on it. This is a look at the map, however, they've uh, where they have been so far and where they are going. They're heading to uh, Park City to finish on Main Street at the top of Main Street. Kind of a party atmosphere. The crowd has already uh, picked up its anticipation and excitement here. And you see them moving along. and. This is the aerial view of it. We're back to live racing now. A minute 40 continues to be the gap with the Peloton trailing right there. And on the front, the Israel Cycling Academy team with their man in yellow. That's Ben Hermans. And uh, he looks like he's quite comfortable right there, third wheel, Todd. He's got almost eight minutes in the bank in terms of anybody who is in the breakaway. So he's happy. He's using his team just the way he needs to. Get him to the final climb, and he has to take care of the rest from there. Well, speaking of final climb, we want to show you as much as that as we possibly can because we expect it to maybe come apart there. So we'll step aside for the moment. The 2019 Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah is brought to you by the Utah Office of Tourism. Experience life-elevating moments in and between Utah's mighty five national parks and on the greatest snow on earth and by the Larry H. Miller dealerships, proud sponsors of the 2019 Most Aggressive Rider jersey, driven by you. Well, I bet they'd like to be at Empire Pass right now on the descent, but they've still got a long way to go. They are headed that direction. 
You can see Empire Pass coming up as they will make the, uh, the, tr the transfer from the midway side of things over to the Park City side. And that's a look at the Peloton with 20.3 miles to go. Let's go back out on the moto and inside the tour with our Chad Andrews. Chad. Hey, guys. Yeah. I had a chance to talk to a, a few of the team directors right behind me. That's our breakaway. It's about a 50-50 split. You have guys that are in that breakaway to win. The, you also have guys that are in the breakaway that are there to protect the GC contenders as they go. Like Israeli, Avila, Magner for, um, for a rally. Their job is to get up as far as they can up the mountain to be there for I guess their own team neutral for their team service. Another interesting race is there's been a little bit of rapid punching in our break. It's breaking down to the guys that want to win the stage and the teams that have an idea of saving their assets for later. Right now, I'm going to stay with the breakaway and see how that kind of shifts. But right now, it's a 50-50 split. Then once we get the real racing going on, I'm going to jump back to where the GC contenders are. Chad, you. Chad, uh, yeah, what, are you, what sure. are you hearing from the directors and what's your take being out there on the road as to the chances of someone from the breakaway surviving to win the stage at this point? It's a minute 30 right now. We got 19.2 miles remaining. Not very good. Uh, like John O'Coulter, he, uh, he had a couple of riders in the break and he didn't sound too, well, first of all, he had a beat of sweat, like finally we're in the breakaway. But more than well, we're hoping our Costa Rican climber can outclimb the GC contenders, but he didn't say with much confidence. And then Van Mark, of course, Jeff Louder, one of the four, uh, Action Higgins Berman, he said to me, he said, Chad, Van Mark made an unbelievable effort to get across, but in the end game, we don't know if it's going to be enough. So the confidence level of anybody in that group behind us is one out of 10, maybe less than that, a half. All right, thanks, Chad. Chad's report brought to us by the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies. And, yeah, that was talking about the uh, the man who made the bridge. Took him 23 minutes all by himself. Was it enough? You'd have to hope so for his sake. And that's James Piccoli, Elevate KHS, who is the nearest competitor for Herman's in the yellow jersey he's 46 seconds behind and uh, he's been so oh so close all week came in wanting to win this tour of utah and he visited with our Kristen kenny before the start of the stage well james this is it you've been working so hard all week 46 seconds back from ben what can you do to get the win today i mean today historically the lead has changed um Everyone knows that the Park City stage of the Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah is really tough. I mean, it's probably the toughest stage of the of the week. And it's at a time where guys are starting to get tired, you know, guys are starting to give up. And uh, the fatigue of the week of America's hardest stage race is setting in. Um, so there's a lot to play for today, for sure. So if things don't change, stay where they are, how would you view second overall considering the world-class field here and being the toughest stage race in America? Uh, I mean, I think I would be satisfied, but of course, like I'm built to win, and that's what we—that's what we're here for, and that's what the team, you know, is backing me to do. Um, so I would love to do that for them. Where can you win on this on this climb today? Uh, I mean, Empire Pass is really hard. Wolf Creek is really hard. I mean, we're going to see the way the race plays out, but uh, it's just a really tough day, and I think I think in the past it's just a race of attrition. So we'll just see how it, how it plays out. Good luck, James. Thank you. Still back in the peloton. The peloton is now close to a minute 15 of the 23 riders out front. Piccoli, of course, is just a few wheels back of the man in yellow, Ben Hermans, the guy who will obviously be keeping track of him. As Hermans told us a little while ago, it's a very simple job for him and his team today. He's just got to be aware of where the closest competitors are. And right now, none of them are out in that break with a minute 15. So uh, he's got to be sitting in the catbird seat and really pleased with what's going on and how his team is uh, is controlling the front of the peloton, Todd. Yeah, this is the moment right now where everybody in this group, they know that it is about to be on huge on Empire Pass. And so get your drinks in now, get a little bit of food in your system. Because once you hit that pass, you are not going to be able to get anything into your 
into your mouth other than oxygen in terms of food, water, no way to get it. Yeah, here's a look at the lead group. And as you pointed out while we were at break, you and I were talking, and you said, really, the people who are controlling the front of the peloton, their race ends at the foot of Empire Pass. They turn it over to their GC people at that point in time. So they're going to push as hard as they can, and that minute 15 gap between the leaders and the peloton will continue to shrink before they get to the start of the climb. There's a really good chance of that. I mean, the break now looking like it's a little bit more motivated. I think they're finally realizing that they are somewhat squandering their gap as we just went through an intermediate sprint. But honestly, the, you know, 115 for these guys and the field right there, really no chance for them to win. And there's a look at the, uh, the peloton will come into your screen moments from now as the, the lead group made that right hand turn to get ready for the entrance to the climb up Empire Pass. More racing straight ahead. They still got the work left to do for that man. Haven't begun the climb yet, but there is some elevation change as they prepare to swing left just in front of the golf course here in moments from now, and they'll take them up past the state park, Wasatch Mountain State Park, and then it is on as they will make the, uh, the climb all the way to the summit, and they'll come along the ridge line and then bomb right down into Park City for the Main Street finish. And Todd, this gap is only 105 right now. Not what that breakaway wanted. The field charging behind, continuing to close down. We had oh, well over two minutes early in the stage. It looked like that breakaway group was going to get a huge gap and very easily could have produced the winner, but they just were not motivated to work in unison. Not many riders pulling, a lot of passengers. Meanwhile, back at the field, Israel Cycling Academy chipping away, very steady. Realize almost a quarter of the peloton and a quarter of the starters in the breakaway today. And look at the front of the peloton. There's the Israel Cycling Academy life lesson as you spoke about the lack of working as a team up front with that breakaway. Now it's down to a minute. They'll be reeled in on this climb. No doubt about it at some point. Yeah and you'll start to see some jockeying for a position here as Israel Cycling Academy now being joined by Rally UHC in the dark blue jerseys on the right. They've got a couple of men in the hunt for general classification in Murphy and Britain. They've got Mannion up in the break and Magner up in the break. So they've been feeling pretty good about today, I think. And now we're down under a minute. Look at that, 50 seconds. We're going to step aside because the climb will begin in earnest when we return to coverage of the Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah. Park City is a top Utah destination that could stake a rightful claim of being the perfect mountain town. Combining its silver mining town heritage, an artistic vibe, a love for great food, and a deep appreciation for the outdoors, Park City strikes a balance between luxury and comfort. With 100 plus restaurants and bars, there's something for every taste and every mood. Since everything's within walking distance, or a short ride on the free citywide transportation system. Wind down after a long day with the craft whiskeys and vodkas at the High West Saloon, or visit the Destination Distillery at Blue Sky Ranch in nearby Wanship, along with other great distilleries, breweries, and wineries. Bad look at Park City, and uh, of course, this look at the finish brought to you by the Utah Office of Tourism. Begin planning your next life elevated adventure at visitutah.com. Crowd here in anticipation of what happens, but they've got to navigate right at the top of your screen. They have to go all the way up that road and then all the way down the other side. And this is the relationship of the lead group and the field getting ever closer. 40 seconds now is what the official designation is for the gap. 
And, and they the, still have over 13 miles to go. And the climb doesn't really start until the park right there on the left and the field already starting to shed guys and the breakaway coming apart as it is now Rally UHC who has gone to the front, done some big turns just while we were away. Evan Huffman in his final race, he went to the front for his team. And now we got, uh, looks like an attack out of the break. Indeed, indeed we do. And now, and this is Cullen Easter. No, it's Tony Baca actually who's gone on the attack. Tony Baca who has gone on the attack out of the break, but they have such a small advantage. This is really just prolonging the agony a little bit. But heck, you're in, been in the break, may as well go for it. That's Mosca behind him, the Trek Segafredo Italian. And then right behind him, it looks to me like that's Gavin Mannion for Rally UHC. Behind him is our rider for Nipovini Fantini, Giovanni Lenardi. And back to the field now. We saw Tony Baca earlier in the week, too, out in a break. Uh, he's a guy who is quite at home in this condition. Number 22 on the left side of your screen. Evan Huffman, last professional day. Just cruising up there with his teammate Nigel Elsay as he says goodbye to professional cycling, only 29 years old, but he's decided the lifestyle is just not for him anymore. And the field, it is on right now. Look at this. Look at that. Conola. Conola, one of the best sprinters in the race, taking a big dig on the front. He's feeling his oats after the win in Salt Lake on the city circuit race. This is the climb. This is Orr's category is beyond classification, <laughs> which means as tough as they had to class classify this, it's beyond that with a 23 percent max grade. Unbelievable. Almost eight miles of climbing and uh, they gained thirty one hundred and ninety two feet in elevation. And so now we got Gavin Mannion who has passed Baca and trying to keep it alive from the breakaway. And one of the challenges of this climb, and it depends on the type of climber you are. When we look at Powder Mountain, it was very steady almost the entire way. Very little pitch change. Empire, it, it'll crank up to over 20% and then it'll go down to five or seven and then it'll go back up to 15. And there's a lot of pace changes on Empire. So it's harder to get the rhythm but you can get a little bit of rest in there and different riders will do different on different types of climbs. The foliage here. Oh, yesterday's winner, uh, Lachlan Morton, and he's going early. Absolutely, I was gonna say, you, you do get a little bit of shade in places on this climb as well. There's one of them, but it's not much. It's uh, the foliage here doesn't give you an awful lot of arching shade. You'll be in the sun an awful lot of this climb this afternoon. A little bit better that way than Powder Mountain for sure. And let's let's not forget when Lachlan won this race a few years ago, he went from about this point. He came into this day down in the general classification, 20, 22 seconds, I believe. And he went so early and built up a huge gap. You can see the valley right behind him. He and he trailed, over, overtook Talansky. Yeah, he trailed Andrew Talansky in yellow, but he would make his move over the top all alone, and that set him up for the dramatic finish on Main Street in Park City. Clock, Lachlan Morton took that seventh stage, and with it, he clinched the overall GC crown as well. So he's got fond memories of this Park City Empire Pass stage for the Tour of Utah, and maybe that's what he's doing right now. He's going back to his, his inner self from a couple of years ago. Yeah, that's Joe Dombrowski now, so maybe he's trying to set up Joey D. By the way, I think that was your pick today, wasn't it? Yes, it was. <laughs> and Dombrowski making his move alongside Morton. He's also familiar with this one. And look at him digging in deep there. Now, this is somebody that they will have to worry about for that GC situation. Now, 208 is still a long time to, uh, to get out there, but Ben Hermans will be concerned at least somewhat about Dombrowski. Mannion crashed a couple of times earlier in this race. Last man standing from the break. Pretty banged up, but 
tough kid, and he's definitely still in the hunt here today. But here comes Joe Dombrowski. Dombrowski turning it on right now. You can see Hermans has one teammate left. I believe that's Avila, who was in the early break. And then Hermans sitting third wheel in the chase. Look at the difference in turnover rate between Gavin Mannion and Dombrowski with the gearing difference. You get a look at, uh, at how they're each approaching it just a little bit differently. Yeah, well, one guy, uh, excuse me, Mannion in the break, tired. He's got that grinding slow cadence. And Dombrowski looking very fresh. I can tell you it doesn't feel very good to him right now. <laughs> but he's got the spring in his legs. He has the leg speed. And he's trying to stretch this one out. Joey D, who I'm sure will be a little disappointed with how he's ridden this week, came from Europe. He's been riding over there. And uh, this is an opportunity for him to really make some hay today. Ben Hermans continues to lead. You've got Dombrowski there at 208 in fifth in the overall GC. Murphy is in there. Eck is in there. And Piccoli at 46 seconds. We saw him a few bit seconds ago. And he was trying to make some ground as well. But Hermans is still the man in charge. And that team on the front at Israel Cycling Academy, all they have to do is make sure that he finishes ahead of Piccoli today. And uh, James Piccoli with his 46 seconds behind now making a move as well. Well, that was Pete Stetna leading that group. But Piccoli with a little bit more pop. He comes around. Avila on his wheel. That's the teammate of Ben Hermans, the man in yellow. So Hermans still has somebody to help him right now to help him close the gaps. And Hermans looks like he's in a little bit of trouble there for the first time in seven days of racing. Took him a while to close that gap. So we've got Dombrowski, Avila. Then we've got Piccoli. Then on the left is Hermans, and then on the very back is Pete Stetna. Those are your five leaders. And Dabrowski surging again. Yeah, he's out of the saddle. Everybody else, well, almost everybody else still in the saddle. Is that Piccoli that just stood up off the saddle as well? But uh, Dombrowski is a guy who knows this stage well. Question is, does he have the legs? the way he's riding this week to go. maintain oh, that. Oh, oh, oh there we go. Avila with a mechanical. He just dropped his chain. chain, and he almost took out some other riders. Stetna almost hit him. So he, he dropped his chain. Hermans and all by himself now. Dombrowski continuing to push on. Also, it looked to me like James Piccoli was in trouble <laughs> just a moment ago. And Dombrowski loves this climb. As much as you can love something yeah. like this, right? <laughs> Everything is yeah. relative. It's a love-hate relationship, I'm <laughs> sure. Oh, Piccoli has recovered, and he's made it back up to Herman's wheel. This has the earmarks of a very interesting finish. Well, and if you think about Ben Herman's right now, and you think about Joe Dombrowski, Dombrowski at 208 down, Herman's can let, he can afford to let Dombrowski get a little bit of time. The man he really has to watch out for is the guy sitting on his wheel, James Piccoli. That gap is much closer at 46 seconds. Dombrowski realistically is looking for a stage win and a podium because that 208, especially given the situation that it is right now, looks to be too much to make up coming into the final stage, unless unless you have a real problem i mean there's uh we saw a moment ago that chain issue so anything yep. can happen anything. but realistically dombrowski looks to try and claim the stage and hermans and piccoli trying to fight it out for the gc this is a great ride by joe dombrowski he's had his biggest career successes here in utah he's a guy who by the way used to live in the state when he was very young. His parents worked for Morton Thiokol, the, uh, the space company in the northern part of the state of Utah, went to Utah State University, the parents, 
And so he's got a history here. He, they moved when he was about two years old. But some to some extent the man who now lives in Virginia felt like maybe it's coming home for him to come to the tour of Utah. He certainly likes to see an opportunity to succeed here in the state that he once called home albeit when he was two years old. Yeah well I mean you, you take every little thing you can for motivation and motivating as well for Piccoli as he has now brought back Dombrowski. First time we've seen Herman's out of the saddle looking like he's laboring a bit as Piccoli seated looking comfortable but all three of these riders any one of them could pull off the stage win. Let's go back out inside the tour with Chad Andrews on the moto Chad. Yeah guys hope you can hear me because the uh, helicopter's right above but I am tucked right in right in front of the three leaders. You've got Dombrowski Piccoli and Hermans. I am looking at the physiological responses to this path this climb and this climb is brutal. So who does it suit. It suits somebody like Dombrowski who has a higher cadence. The problem with riding with a higher cadence is it elevates your heart rate. But uh, Piccoli on the other hand looks like he's got a slower cadence. So he has a way the tendency to bring his heart rate down. So different climbing styles suit the riders. The situation I'm seeing is it Vincent Piccoli, even though they're okay with the Dombrowski getting the stage win, I think those guys, even though they're battling out for GC, they also want the stage win as well. So watch the cadence of the riders and in their mouth breathing. Back to you guys. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Chad. Well, it's a, it's a good point, and we kind of talked about it earlier, comparing Dombrowski to Gavin Mannion, who was coming back from the break. When you have decent leg speed on a climb that's this steep, it's usually an indicator. Lawson Craddock, yellow jersey, early in the race. Uh, it's usually an indication that you're a little bit fresher if you still have good leg speed. So that threesome Dombrowski, out front. Sorry there, Dombrowski asking for some people to pull through. You saw that, he's like, hey, he put his <laughs> hand out. Come on, roll through, guys, let's work together. And uh, I think that uh, Hermans is hurting enough, he's probably not thinking like he's gonna do a whole bunch of work right now. Yeah, Piccoli third wheel looks pretty comfortable right now as well. Yeah, and, and honestly, I mean, we've seen Hermans do this before. We've seen him follow Piccoli, who's been forcing the pace, and then jump him late. And I'm sure if he can, he'll do it today, too. The other thing we've seen is that Hermans will stay in the saddle and has been able to do that. You saw Dombrowski a moment ago get up on the pedals, and then Piccoli did the same thing third wheel. In the middle, Hermans just continued to stay seated. So that may uh, bode well for his legs because he certainly did that when he when he made the big move in North Salt Lake as well. He was able to stay in the saddle and overhaul the others from that position without having to get out of the saddle itself. Yeah you can make more power when you're standing but it's overall it tires you out so you can't stand for a long time most riders can't and so if you need it to really get explosive power or to hang on for dear life you can do it for a while. Yeah so if you're Hermans and you can maintain that second wheel like that without having to go to the standing position uh, all the better for you as you come down the stretch. We'll step aside right now it's a three man race out front. Joe Dombrowski Ben Hermans and James Piccoli. Right now the competition uh, affecting perhaps the picks for today is the competition between the broadcasters heats up. Ben Hermans Frankie's pick Frankie might get some points today and then James Piccoli's up there that's Chad's pick. Kyle Murphy uh, go go your guy is up near the front as well so is Joe Dombrowski uh, maybe only Brad out right now and he's leading coming into today with Lachlan Morton but that is Craddock and um, he's a guy who certainly oh, excuse me that's Joe Dombrowski uh, he and his teammate Craddock have been around the lead several times this week but this is the best that Joe has looked Joe is looking really good on this climb as he really hasn't had anybody else even willing to come through and take a pull he got away by himself. They eventually came up to him. It was not without a big effort to get there. This is Keegan Swerble. He is trying to catch fourth, fifth, and sixth on the road. So that's Murphy at the back of that group. That's Craddock in front of him, and it's Almeida on the front, the best young rider. And Swerble now uh, sitting in seventh place on this climb. He comes into the day uh, in 11th in the general classification. So this is a good ride for him. But it's not going to totally upset the top 10, that's for sure. 10 second differential between the lead three and then the following four. 
That gives you a little bit of visual perspective as they continue to make their way up that climb to the summit. Then they'll go along the ridge line, and that has a little bit of elevation change as well before they start heading for home in Park City and the finish. At lead group, there's a look at uh, Piccoli, and still have a little over 10, 10 and a half miles still to go. A lot of it downhill, though. A lot of it downhill because they're they're getting a fair distance up the climb. This is Britman and Eck. Now Eck came into the day in third place overall, so he is cracking right now. And I did speak with Pat McCarty for the rally team this morning. I asked him, hey, what's the goal? He said the goal is to try and get Murphy into the final podium. And we think there's a chance that Eck is young enough and that he might crack. And we also want to get the stage win. Well, right now, Murphy's on his way to a podium finish overall. And this is Kyle Murphy in this group. And look at this. Not much ten, of a gap. Ten seconds, relatively close, but closing it down, that's another thing. And of course, once you go over the top, then you've got to worry about the descent after you make that ridge line traverse and then heading down into Park City. Still time to make up make up time there, but it is a, a tricky descent at times. Now the weather's perfect today. It's warm. You're going to have uh, no issues on the road. We've seen rain on the stage yes, in the past have. on the descent, which is just absolutely scary. Today it is beautiful as I look out the back of our broadcast studio here. Hardly a cloud in the sky. They continue to work their way up. Oh, Murphy's in trouble. Murphy's in trouble. And he knows right now if he can stay with these guys, he's got third place in the overall classification. He will move from fourth to third because Eck has been dropped. He's just got nothing left. He can't stay on. Murphy involved in that mishap the other day where he came off the bike. You wonder if there's any physical residual physical uh, issues there. He's got to get a little bit of a shower. Yeah, some cold water right right down the back on a climb like this. That's that's helpful. That's your lead group there with Dombrowski out front. Second wheel is Herman's third wheel is Piccoli. First and second in the GC between Herman's and Piccoli. And look at Almeida. He's not going to get any help here from Lawson Craddock because Craddock has a teammate up the road. And what now what you might see from Craddock is he might sit here and wait. And if Almeida looks like he's going to crack, he might try and jump across. How much does Lawson Craddock have left from yesterday? Well, one thing about Lawson Craddock is if he gets up here now, Herman's maybe going to take his first pull. If if Craddock gets up to the first group of four or three riders and makes it a foursome, if he attacks, he's not super high in the general classification. He's down in eighth place. Yeah, it looks like Craddock is laboring right now. Oh, that switchback right there is over 15 percent, well over. Encouragement being yelled by the spectators here. Looks like they like Joe, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Tell him how good he looks right now. Craddock just trying to stay on with Almeida. We had a chance to talk to uh, Jeff Lauder today about Almeida. Jeff, of course, who worked with us on this broadcast before, a participant in the Tour of Utah and now coaching. And yeah. he talked about Almeida being a, a, a tough competitor. Well, there for a moment it looked like Almeida trying to regroup, and when Lawson Craddock came up uh, on his wheel, stood up again and, and pulled out. Uh, Craddock's, Craddock's, he is probably going to get his ticket punched here for real this time. As Almeida has just continued to keep the pressure on, and the gap now just mushrooming immediately. Usually once you get dropped on a climb this steep if you fight your way back onto the wheel it usually is only for a little while. He's completely anaerobic. Almeida here 
doing an awesome job. He might ride himself across. And even if he doesn't make it on the climb, the other riders are going to look at each other just a little bit on the descent, and I would think he would be able to catch on the descent if he's within 10 seconds at the top. 234 back, fifth in the GC right now. That's the gap. It's not much. Almeida almost there. So Dombrowski keeps looking back, Wait, looking for Almeida. somebody, and Almeida right blows by. by. Absolutely, and they there don't he goes. have to chase him. But Joey's going to get right on. Almeida comes into the day, sixth place, one spot behind Dombrowski. He's at 234. Dombrowski what 208? 208. So that's why Dombrowski wants to follow him. He doesn't want to lose his top five in the general classification. And he also wants to try and win the stage. Look at that great surging attack as he rode by. And Herman's now he lets Piccoli do a little bit of chasing and then he jumps. And Piccoli going right after him as well. If you have these four riders together when they hit the summit after they've cross the ridge line and then go down into Park City. The descent could be very interesting and especially when they come around and swing around the outskirts of town and then to come up Main Street again because there is a little bit of elevation and that last uh, three four hundred meters could be very interesting. Yeah really hard to pick the winner from this group of four if they are together. And they still have four miles of climbing. Notice the helmet there that Piccoli's riding. See how it has very few vents. It's an aerodynamic helmet. So he's tried to save a little bit of energy all day by having a helmet that's more aero. But there's not as much ventilation. You get a little bit hotter. And it, it's, it's a balancing act. It is a cool Oh, there goes Almeida today. again. Yeah, Almeida with those little probing attacks. And Dombrowski is the man who keeps having to chase him. And Herman's went with him. Looks like Piccoli's dropping back a little bit right now, though. He's in trouble. That's that is definitely not by design. So 3.1 miles to the top. I was mentioning, though, the about the the point with the uh, ventil uh, ventilation. It is a cooler stage today because of the elevation. Once you get onto the climb now, not earlier. Uh, as they were down on the valley floor, certainly, but at least this part of the climb. And then, of course, as you come downhill, that descent speeds of over 50 miles an hour with the switchbacks makes it technical at times. Yeah. And you do get some cooling. Yeah, there's no doubt once they get up to the top, heat will not be an issue anymore. Keegan Swerbel here now is caught Lawson and Craddock. And Piccoli struggling as he is probably going to lose contact here because there's enough climbing left. I don't see him being able to get back on. We'll see. I mean, he is a heck of a fighter. It does level out in places as they get toward the top. And there's even a tiny little downhill through the aspen trees, not that far in front of where they are right now. Let's talk about the tactical change. Because of Almeida coming up, he is now willing to go out front and take a pull. It was all Dombrowski earlier. So in some respects, this might actually help Joey D. He won't have to be on the front the entire time. We saw Herman's. And Piccoli reticent to get up and take a pull. Now Almeida, not the same situation. Now, Almeida is a man who wants to just go for it. And he's, he comes in sixth on the general classification as, as he rolls into the stage. And he'd like to move himself up some spots into the top five. Piccoli there grabbing a bottle. A little bit of a sticky bottle there. And uh, what I mean by that is you grab that bottle, take advantage of that opportunity to just push off just a little bit and give yourself uh, that little tiny bit of respite on the climb. Almeida there trying to grab a bottle from the fan, and he got it, immediately just dousing himself, trying to stay cool. Well, he's been on the front for a while now, taking that pull, so it has allowed Hermans and Dombrowski to ride the wheel. And you're absolutely right, though, Steve. You're talking about how 
Almeida has come to the front. The only man who really hasn't been pulling in this trio is the race leader, and that's Ben Hermans. And so he's just playing his cards very well. He told Kristen Kenny earlier today that all he had to do was look at the guys that were within three minutes of them, of him, and he has done that. Swerble up to Piccoli. More racing straight ahead as they uh, head for the summit, and then they'll be heading downhill into Park City. Well, the Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah continues. There's Swerble trying to catch up to that lead group as well. So he's come across, Todd, and now we're starting to see some really interesting racing. How much does anyone have left, of course, is the key. That threesome up front with, with Hermans and with Almeida and Almeida and with uh, Joe Dombrowski. But this one is not going to be one without a real effort. Still a long way to go. Yeah, no doubt this climb absolutely brutal. A little bit of shade here through the Aspens. Almeida still doing the work on the front. Piccoli trying to claw his way back up there. As he's been jumped by Keegan Swerble, and Swerble looks like he's making contact with the leaders. Your overall leaders, the GC Hermans is 46 seconds ahead of Piccoli. Then Eck, who is not in the mix right now. Murphy a minute 48. There's Eck coming up. Kyle Murphy, minute 48, and Joe Dombrowski, 208 back. This is a ways behind, however, so again, the, the threesome, which is now a foursome up front, in control of this thing. And Almeida continues to just drive the pace. Let's go out on the uh, race course with our own Chad Andrews again, sitting on the moto. Chad, what's new up there? Tucked in right in front of lead group of four to five. One thing that you guys need to be aware of, as we get closer to the top, it flatten out. So two things that actually help Piccoli. If it does flatten out, it's not the pure climber's climber, it can roll the bigger gear. Also, those all those guys come off the top to get within four seconds. You also have to Piccoli. He's got a punchy little climbs like, I think my guy Stewie here, and, for Utah, what an amazing event it has been. Back to you guys. All right, thanks. Uh, a little broken up there, but talking about Piccoli's punchy style might be served when they get to the top. And look at Joe Dombrowski now out of the saddle. Speaking of punchy, he's taking some punches right now as he's going for this stage win. He's been incredibly motivated, following the wheel of Almeida for quite a while, and now has a little bit of a gap. It looks like Keegan Swerble that's chasing with Ben Hermans, the race leader, on his wheel. And this is what happens when you spend a lot of time on the front of a group. Even though it's a steep climb and there's not much of a gap, it does hurt you. And then guys jump you later on. This is right before the hard right turn, the flat road, and then the little bump up to the finish. So he is very close to the top right now. And then it's a matter of putting your head down Maybe getting on that top tube and just uh, as quickly as possible riding gravity down into Park City. Yeah, this is here comes the right hand turn up near the top. Very well timed attack for Joe Dombrowski. Yeah, he's got this climb to make before it flattens out. And when you, you notice when you go around a sharp corner like that, it's really easy to look at the competition. You don't have to crane your neck all the way around. Swerble now getting a little bit of the better of Ben Hermans. So Dombrowski was able just to look over his right shoulder. He could see, okay, I got two guys chasing. I got other guys drop behind them. There you go if you ever wonder what Santa would look like in short pants. You just got your fill of it right there. 1K to the KOM for our leader, Joe Dombrowski. And 10K to the finish. 6.2 miles. Five and a half miles roughly from the top of the climb to the finish. Most of it flying downhill. There's a little break in the descent where you have to do a short climb. And then you have to also climb up Main Street in Park City to the finish for several blocks. It's about uh, what, six, seven blocks at around 7%. And it is actually, if someone's right behind you, it's a painful finish, finishing stretch. 
So how much will you have separation. That's the question by the time you get there. Joe Dombrowski again in that pink EF education first jersey wearing the number three right now it seems to be lucky for him as he's out front. There's the yellow jersey where Herman's chasing Swerble and Dabrowski's ridden this enough to know he knows exactly what the feeling is and how he should be feeling at this juncture of the ride. You can see the climb still remains for him. He's still got to make that little uphill grade. Well, there's the top. But Joe Dabrowski now has to rip this descent if he wants to get this stage win. Good crowd on top, and you gotta like his chances here. Again, the fact that he has ridden this so many times and successfully ridden this this uh, stage as well. But Jim, Joe Dombrowski made that move just before he turned onto the the top of the ridge line. Here's the group right behind him. Herman's in second. Clock on the lower left to the top. About 18 seconds to these two riders. I think that's enough of a gap that he might be able to stay away. In fact, I think he probably will. One of the hairpins at the top now is he'll wind his way down. And this is James Piccoli. No, this is Almeida, excuse me. Trying to make contact on this descent. Let's think about a little bit about the psychology and the goals of different riders right now. So Joe Dombrowski off the front. He knows he can't make up two minutes in the overall classification. This is about winning the stage. This is about getting a stage win at a race that he loves, that he's won overall. He comes into the day down in the general classification a little bit more than he wants to be. He's in fifth. He's not going to win this overall. This is about stage glory. Behind him, when you look at Hermans, Hermans needs to be conservative right now. He's got two minutes to play with. He needs to not crash on this descent. So I don't see anybody bringing Dombrowski back on this descent because Hermans is not going to drive it and throw all caution to the wind. And Hermans staying ahead of Piccoli. That was 46 seconds and protecting yellow. The, the uh, descent has some technical areas out of, of it as well. You've got to be, you've got to be at least a little bit concerned about how you get down there. It's not simply a matter of pure speed. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to be very switched on in the descent. We've had some riders crash at very high rates of speed on this descent before. This corner here, pretty tricky. They got to scrub off a lot of speed. You can see Almeida uh, going a little bit wide. Joe Dombrowski did as well. And uh, I, don't, I don't think they're going to catch him. They're going to be looking at each other. And Dombrowski here, he's just got to be, he's got to be fast, but he has to be smart and not overcook it in a corner. And then he should have this one in the bag. He knows he's heading for home right now with four miles to go. And you look at Joe Dombrowski's history at this race, winning the overall in 2015. He got a stage as well. And, there's the biggest wins in his career. His, in, those are the, the two one day races or the or sorry, the two UCI or international races that are at the top of his his resume. And look at him now. He loves this race. You got a chance to see Park City down below. This is coming into town. Back in May of this year, Dombrowski 12th overall at the Giro d'Italia 21 day race. One of the three grand tours in cycling second biggest race in the world 12th overall there. I think he was hoping for a little bit more in the general classification. He started out maybe not super sharp but he's been climbing day after day as the stages are hard. This is that little uphill bump in the middle of the descent. And you can see how hard he's flogging himself. He's just got to keep as much speed as he can get back up to speed and then he can rest and tuck again as it goes down. You know you talked about this descent and Kristen Kenny spoke to Ben Herman's about this descent before the stage. Let's bring her in right now. Yeah guys I was talking to Ben because his teammate Hamish actually when they were riding this stage practicing his teammate crashed going down on the descent. So I asked Ben specifically are you concerned about this if your teammate crashed is that a concern. 
He said, no, I got this. This one, I got. My teammate, he did say he crashed because he did hit a, a rock and his tire punctured. So, but he said he's not worried. Well, and he doesn't have to push it, Todd, all that heavy because, uh, because he does have the 46 second cushion between himself and James Piccoli. So it's it's not like he had to come down this and hold off everybody else and have no margin for error. The way it's working for Ben Hermans is probably the way he had hoped that it would, where he's comfortable enough, but he's up high enough in the uh, in the stage today that uh, everything should work well for him. He should be in yellow when it's all over with. Again, barring a problem like the, the puncture or some kind of a mechanical. Yeah, now one thing I would be absolutely terrified of is to hit a rock on this descent and blow out a front tire. That would be scary. There, this section here, this straight section where we just saw Joe Dombrowski super fast. It's right around the corner for this Ben Herman's led chase group. And then there's a, uh, I believe it's a hard left turn at the bottom. And it's, you got to be, well, it's very important to have previewed the course because you will be going 60 miles an hour right here and then you have to get a whole bunch of brakes. Dombrowski in that super tuck position. Yeah, just notice it's... Uh, notice how when you're in that super tuck position, your frontal area is so much smaller that you just have more aerodynamic... Kind of a wing effect, isn't it? Uh, where the, the air goes up and over the top. Yep. To the left of the traffic island here. And you really can't pedal on a descent this steep, so it's all about getting the best tuck you can because you're out of gears. Just 2K to go. Just 1.2 miles for Joe Dombrowski. And look at this, he's picked up five additional seconds, so nobody touching him right now. Very efficient descent for Joe Dombrowski on this one. Now someone pedaling there, going down. Now Joe Dombrowski able to pedal a little bit, comes out of, of the super tuck, makes that little uh, that little jog to the right and then the left at the top of this Deer Valley Road. And he'll pass our broadcast position here in just a few moments. We'll be making the left here at the bottom. We've actually seen crashes in this corner before as well. But that was when we had a group of riders together and somebody trying to dive bomb through the turn. Dombrowski here just about to make the corner on the main street and be greeted by Park City and hopefully the stage win for him. Well, he's got the finish in his sights right now. Joe Dombrowski heading up, takes a quick look behind him and there's no one who's going to catch him. And Joe Dombrowski, former winner, will wind up winning this stage but there's James Piccoli. He also got back into the group with Hermans. But it's Joey D's day. Got 500 meters to go right there, and it is uphill, but he is out of the saddle, and he hears the accolades from the crowd. The bells begin to ring, and this crowd knows they've seen this man before in this position. Number three, Joe Dombrowski, pedaling to the stage win. First opportunity for him to stand atop the podium in this 2019 Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah. A great performance by Dombrowski attacking early on the climb. Others coming up to him. He drove the break. He eventually attacked them again. Bombed the descent. And this has got to hurt, but it's got to feel sweet at the same time because he knows he's got it now. A quick look back again. Moments from now, the elation of winning stage six of the Tour of Utah. Joey D. Education first, a wave, and now the two-handed salute, and he crosses the finish line, the winner. This second group. Almeida on the right. It looks like he's got the best legs. Piccoli let it out. Almeida being followed by the yellow jersey and Hermans. Joao Almeida. Second on the day. And let's see if Swerble's going to come around the yellow. He is. Swerble. Oh, Greg oh, races. Oh, Hermans gets close. there. So close. But it doesn't matter because Ben Hermans will win yellow now that it's all over with. What a tour for this man. 
two consecutive stage wins. And he has the yellow at the end of the day. Yeah, not an easy defense for him today, actually. And his team did a great job to put him in perfect position at the bottom. But on the final climb, he had to work for it. He's lucky he had a nice bit of a gap in the general classification, so he didn't have to sweat things too much. Unofficially, Joe Dombrowski the winner by 24 seconds over Almeida. Swerble comes in third. Is that Craddock? Lawson Craddock, Craddock coming in. Craddock making his way. And that might be Badalati behind him for the Israel Cycling Academy. Minute 24, the margin there. And the end of a long day in the saddle. Yeah, tough, tough day of racing. And there's Kyle Murphy. Murphy started the day in fourth. There's Lachlan Morton off to the right, winner yesterday. Murphy tried to hang, eventually cracked. He looks very cracked right now. He may have lost a spot in the general classification today. Looks like Gavin Mannion there coming through. Well, Steve, you and I spoke with Fabrizio Guidi before the stage, and we said, how's the race been for you? He's the director for EF Education First. He goes, well, with Lachlan's win yesterday, pretty good. We'll see how today goes. I think he's going to feel even better. Yeah, another stage win for that team. But that man, Ben Hermans, takes the jersey and wins the championship. Joe Dombrowski, a happy finish for his EF team. And Almeida, Swerble, Hermans, and Piccoli, your top five. The 2019 Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah has been brought to you by Zions Bank. For banking built to keep up with life, Zions Bank is for you. University of Utah Health, official medical provider of the Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah, and you. Snowbird. Proud partner and host venue of the Tour of Utah. The Utah Sports Commission. Utah, the state of sports. And by the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies. More than 80 businesses united by one simple mission of enriching lives. Postcard of the Day presented by the Utah Office of Tourism. Proud partner of the Tour of Utah. Inviting you to experience the mighty five national parks and all the unforgettable landscapes and communities in between. Then come winter, the greatest snow on earth. Find inspiration and itineraries at visitutah.com. Well, they saw a lot of the state of Utah today and when it was all over with this man, Ben Hermans from the Israel Cycling Academy. As he has been since the mid part of this tour, he finishes up in his favorite color right now and that's yellow. Wins the yellow jersey. A look at the final five in the GC, the top five. Hermans with the win. What's the margin? 50 seconds over James Piccoli and Dombrowski elevates himself to third on the podium with the win today. Almeida also up two spots into fourth and Nicholas Eck, he was the casualty of the day dropping from third down to fifth, but still a great ride for him. Our Kristen Kenny visiting with Hermans after the win. And I'm with the man in yellow, Ben. I know today was not an easy one. How deep did you have to dig on that climb? Uh, yeah, it's always painful. It doesn't matter how deep you go. Even in the in training, when you go 100 watts less than than you can, is already painful. So, but I was quite comfortable in the wheel of Joe. He was pulling almost all the climb. And then uh, when Piccoli dropped, I was sure about the uh, GC win and like. Uh, Mentally, I had some decompression there, and when uh, Joe attacked, uh, I didn't really want to follow him also because he pulled all the climb, and uh, we were also a week uh, before the race together in the in the same house, so yeah, it was nice uh, that he won also a stage here. So you said to me earlier, you were just going to look around and see what those guys within three minutes of you were doing. Was there ever a moment today where you were nervous, or did you feel like you had this the whole way? Yeah, I had the feeling that we had this, yeah. I had uh, 
straight from even from the neutral start, I had uh, the feeling that I had good legs today. The past two days were a little bit different because of the, the late race in Salt Lake City also, and I didn't feel that good, but uh, today I was feeling really fresh. Well, Ben, you finished second overall last year. Now the yellow this year. How about that? Yeah, it's a race I really like. I always finish good here, and uh, I was uh, two times close to, I uh, one time close to the podium, then one time close to the win, and now I can, I can enjoy the win, so this is really great for me. Congratulations and enjoy that yellow. Thank you. So Dombrowski on the final pull. It was Dombrowski doing most of the work early up the Empire Pass climb. Ben Herman's appreciating that as well, going with him. But Dombrowski just had the legs today, especially near the top. Great attack by him, well-timed. But he also probably knew that Hermans would give him just that little bit of leash because he was down a couple of minutes in the general classification. And sure enough, that's exactly how it worked. Dombrowski, once he got uh, away at the top, was never headed in that super tuck all the way into Park City. And as he came up Main Street, he knew that the stage was his. Final stage of the 2019 Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah. And the stage results, Dombrowski finishing ahead of Almeida. Swervel came in and uh, was able to edge Hermans for third. And Piccoli winds up in fifth on the podium today. Kristen Kenny with our stage winner. Well, Joe, your teammate Lachlan yesterday, you today with the stage win. What do you think about what your team was able to accomplish at America's toughest stage race? Yeah, I think the last two days have been great. Um, we thought yesterday it would be a good day for the breakaway because it's not really super clear that it's a GC finish, but uh, the sprinters team has no reason to ride. The GC teams are happy to kind of save it for today. So we wanted to put Lachlan in the move, uh, and he did just that, and then he won in the end. Um, and today uh, we wanted to put someone in the break, maybe to go across to, just in case. Um, so we had Jimmy up there. Uh, the Israel Cycling Academy kept the gap pretty close, so we caught them pretty early. So from that aspect, um, you know, it wasn't maybe quite what we planned, but then, uh, you know, I figured I felt good on the climb. Uh, I tried to go early because it's more consistent and steep, and then it starts to have some rolling bits where it's sort of disadvantageous to be on the front. Um, I found myself kind of stuck there with Pickley and Hermans, but um, I couldn't. <clears throat> it's like you don't want to just pull them to the line either. Uh, so I eased off a bit. Uh, Joel came back and pulled, and then I just saw a good opportunity, a couple K from the top and thought I'd give it a go, and that was the gap, so. Yeah, you said the key to this, to winning here, is climb fast. Yeah. So when exactly were you telling yourself, I got to do this, I'm climbing fast, I got the legs for this? Uh, I felt from the bottom that maybe I was one of the strongest or the strongest in the group, but uh, because I wasn't able to go alone from the bottom and because there's some rollers and you can be in the wind a bit, I didn't want to, you know, do too much. Um, so then I kind of eased off and let some people come back, and then they're happy to pull. Uh, and then it's just, you have to sort of like know the right time, feel it, so. Well, you certainly felt it and you got it done today. Congratulations. Thank you. So he did get a little help from Almeida. I think that really helped him when he was willing to take the pulls stopped him from having to do it all by himself. Yep, then he was able to attack off of that. Three career victories for Joe Dombrowski, all of them in Utah, but how about Ben Hermans? He started the race out by putting his stamp on Powder Mountain, then he won North Salt Lake, and then today, he all he had to do was get through Empire, but the race is never over until you're through Empire. Yeah, what a week of racing this was. It was uh, an incredible opportunity. We saw all kinds of different racing. We saw a photo finish. You don't see that very often. But uh, what an amazing week. And on behalf of our entire broadcast crew, we hope you've enjoyed being with us for this tour of Utah. As we look back at the week, we say good night. We'll see you next year.
left side of your screen. The man 